finish Messi! It is the cleanest of clean finishes from the best on the planet. It's time for the biggest sports stories. Liverpool, the champions of Europe, are top of the world. The biggest interviews. That uh, such a great spectacle is ruined by such such thuggish behaviour. And all the analysis right here. He's the one player that has the arrogance to think that he can play in any stadium in the world and any pitch in the world in front of any player in the world and take them on. Every weekday, it's my sport, it's your sport. It's CFM Sport. Let's join the team for the biggest show in the world of sport on CFM Stereo. My station, your station. After a weekend of big matchups and big wins for some of the biggest teams in the world, you find the biggest stories right here on ZFM Sport. It's a Monday evening and a welcome to the weekend review. My name is Mike Madoda. With me in the studio is Chris Gray. And a bit later on, we'll be joined up by Alois Bunjira. Our producer is Sean Tafirinika on the home front after the Zimbabwe under-19 team performed well uh, in the warm-up matches and raised expectations at the under-19 ICC Cricket World Cup proved a stage too big for the young Chevrons as subpar performances saw Zimbabwe in the competition in 11th place. In international sport, Novak Djokovic recovered from two sets uh, to one down to defeat fifth seed Dominic Thiem in a thrilling five-setter to claim a record eighth Australian Open title and his 17th Grand Slam. On the ladies' side, 21-year-old Sophia Kennan uh, announced herself to the world by stunning two-time Grand Slam champion Gabina Muguruza to win her maiden slam. In Around the World in 60, we take off in Miami where quarterback Patrick Mahomes produced a staggering fourth-quarter performance to guide the Kansas City. Chiefs to their first Super Bowl win in 50 years. In Riyadh, Gray McDowell has set his sights on a big 2020 after returning to the winner's circle at the Saudi International. And in this weekend's rugby action in the Southern Hemisphere, there were important opening weekend wins for the Sharks, the Stormers, the Chiefs, while in the Northern Hemisphere, a new look France team humbled World Cup finalist England in their Six Nations opener. I will wrap it all up with the Castle Lager World Football Report where for the third time in a row FC Platinum capitulated in the CAF Champions League group stage with just the one point from their campaign. In the Premier League, victorious Jose Mourinho held Spurs win over Manchester City last night in Serie A. Refereeing decisions were once again the centre of attention after Cristiano Ronaldo converted two contentious penalties in a 3-0 win uh, over Fiorentina. In La Liga, Zinedine Zidane has accepted responsibility for Real Madrid's sluggish display in the first half of their derby victory over Atletico. And in the Bundesliga, Bayern Munich moved top of the table after easing past Mainz 3-1 with Robert Lewandowski scoring yet again. The Warriors, the Chevrons, the Cheetahs, the Mighty Warriors and the Sables. From the pool to the track to the field, we are Team Zimbabwe. The Home Front. Local sports news and analysis. Leg spinner privilege Chesa produced a brilliant a bowling spell which saw him hauling five wickets to lead Zimbabwe to a thumping 172 run victory over Scotland in the ICC Under 19 Cricket World Cup 11th place playoff at the Diamond Oval on Saturday. Win assured Zimbabwe finished the tournament in 11th position out of 16 teams, the same spot they secured in the last ICC Under 19 Cricket World Cup in New Zealand two years ago. Zimbabwe won three of the six matches they played in South Africa, two of the wins coming against Scotland and Canada in the plate section for placings. Now, if you take a look, of course, at that game versus Scotland, Chris, very convincing uh, victory by Zimbabwe, 172 runs. So Zimbabwe clearly the better side, but there's no running away from the fact that after what was promised uh, by Zimbabwe cricket and the coaching staff at the under 19s to finish in 11th place when they had talked about challenging for the main award itself, leaves a bit of uh, listen a sour taste and it's it's disappointing it's, at the end. it's disappointing I don't think we've seen any improvement if last time we were 11th and this time again we're 11th Zim Cricket in terms of the under 19s in terms of development we can clearly see there if you just look at the numbers there's no development there's no growth we're not going anywhere 
And it makes it even harder when there was a lot of talk beforehand when in the warm-up stages they had some results that we looked at and we said, you know what, if you look at these warm-up results, these guys have a chance. And we started talking them up a bit more to say that the expectations that they had set were possible. Is is this a classic case, uh, Chris, of a team failing to handle the pressure? Because uh, they go into that warm-up tournament. Before the warm-up tournament, you've got their coach saying, oh, these guys are good enough to compete. These guys can challenge the best teams in the world. They go to this warm-up tournament. They do so well. Mm. against some of the leading nations uh, in the world beat New Zealand beat South Africa challenged India come the tournament proper they fall away and they just don't fall away they fall badly away is it the case that our youngsters were unable to handle the pressure and the expectation that they built during that warm-up absolutely I think there was a lot of expectation built before the warm-up during the warm-up they performed exceptionally well and now the challenge comes when you have to now exceed that to exceed your own performance it was fine before the warm-ups when they had just talked themselves up and we were saying okay so put something down so that we know exactly how far we're gonna go and they did extremely well well much better than we had anticipated in the warm-ups so what that then does is it put a lot of pressure on them and I think mentally they kind of faltered there. Yeah, pros, uh, coach uh, Prosper would say uh, before the team went to the World Cup he was talking big, big things quoted as saying big things but uh, he's now quoted as saying I'm happy with the victory it was a convincing one we needed to finish well to make sure we finished number 11 so that come the next World Cup we don't have to go through qualifications so on that note I am happy now this is the same guy who was saying that we could go to the semis he is the same guy who was saying we could actually win the tournament outright and uh, he's now talking about how happy he is because they've secured direct qualification and it, it almost sounds like he's uh, he, he's quite aware that his job is going to come under some sort of scrutiny yep, and now he's talking himself up and talking this 11th place finish as an achievement he's talking it up as an achievement and i think what he's managed to do in this conversation is to kind of look at the match in isolation to yes. say we finished well mm. this was our last match and we finished well and look they did finish In this particular match, did they play well? Yes. But in the rest of the lead-up to this final match, they could have done so much better. And obviously, that's a result of the preparation that goes in from you as a coach. The scrutiny comes from you as a coach because you were responsible for preparing these boys, whether it's on the field or mentally as well. We attribute a lot to coaches who are able to keep their players in the game. And that's what he did manage to do is after all of that warm-up where they did well, he didn't manage to keep them focused and in the game. And of course, as Zimbabwe, the three victories they registered were against teams that, uh, to be honest, we pretty much expected to beat. Two victories versus Scotland. The first one was in the group stage where Zimbabwe beat Scotland by eight wickets. In that same group stage, we lost to Bangladesh by nine wickets and lost to Pakistan by 38 runs. The played quarterfinal, so Zimbabwe beating Canada by 95 runs. The ninth place playoff semi-final, Zimbabwe lost to England by 75 runs. And of course, uh, uh, yes, uh, the final match that they played was the 11th place playoff beating Scotland by 172 runs so you can tell that the games that we we expected to win we won mm-hmm. and then the games in which uh, Prosper would say, said we were going to challenge we were beaten quite uh, comfortably individual performances there was some really good one but of course uh, Wesley Madere I think he stands out as an all-rounder because he appears uh, in some of the leading uh, run getters the top three he's there with 206 runs and then he also picked up some wickets finishing as the second highest wicket taker with seventh our highest uh, wicket taker was Sakumuzi Nlela who picked up eight wickets the highest run getter was Tadiwa Nashe Marumadi who made 257 runs Emmanuel Bauer 239 runs second on that list. This is EFM Sport talking the under-19 cricket team who, of course, are campaigning at the World Cup in South Africa, finishing in a disappointing 11th place. Tell us your thoughts on our WhatsApp platform 0731-168-045. That same platform is the one that you can use to send in your hashtags if you want to take part in the Palenta Nutriactive Instant Porridge daily sports trivia you send us that hashtag that's hashtag nutriactive and then we get to call you back if you are the lucky one you'll field two questions and you'll have to get both correct in order to qualify for this month's draw hi my name is sean williams zimbabwe cricket captain you're listening to zfm sport z Let's take a look at the rest of your local sport. We start off with swimming, where 35 swimmers have been selected to represent Zimbabwe at this year's annual Kana Zone 4 Swimming Championships, slated for Khabarone Botswana this month. The Games will run from the 20th to the 23rd of February and will feature teams from around the continent that will be battling it out in different categories comprising of boys and girls aged 
11 years and above. Zimbabwe swimming chairperson Tracy Dorman expressed satisfaction over the selected team, adding that hopes are high that they will bring back honours. In handball news, the Zimbabwe Handball Federation have secured friendly matches for the under-20 and under-18 national teams against Mozambique ahead of the IHF Trophy Zone 6 in April. Zimbabwe are hosting the regional competition for the youth and junior teams and would want to utilise the home advantage for better results. Hence, they have engaged Mozambique as part of their preparations. The matches are expected to take place on the 22nd of February in Baira. In chess news, the Zimbabwe Chess Federation has announced that men's and women's teams will represent the country at the World Chess Olympiad in 2020, set for Russia in July. Farai Mandija, Rodwell Makoto, Jemba Jemuse, Spencer Masango and Emerald Mushore will make up the men's team. The women's team will comprise of Kudzanai Charinda, Christine Makwena, Linda Shaba, Refilwe Mudodo and Tatenda Zengeni. Given the wealth of experience and international exposure that the players have, Team Zimbabwe is expected to bring back medals as they do battle against the best of the best. International Sports News Roundup, where the world comes out to play. This is ZFM Sport on a Monday, the weekend review, taking a look back at the big action moments from this past weekend in studio. Chris Gray and Mike Madrid. A bit later on during the beautiful game, we'll be joined by Alois Bunjira as we talk FC Platinum and the disappointing CAF Champions League campaign. We'll also take a look at the big matches that were played in the major leagues of Europe. But before we get there, let's give you some international sports news, starting down under where all conquering no Novak Djokovic uh, yesterday said a turbulent childhood where he had to queue for milk and bread in war-torn Serbia made him hungry for success after he fought back from the brink to win his eighth Australian Open. The 32-year-old needed to dig deep to rally from two sets to one down for the first time in a Grand Slam final and battle past fifth seed Austrian Dominic Thiem 6-4-4-6-2-6-6-3-6-4. I think we all had different... Um trajectories in our lives. I mean, we, we all grew up in different circumstances, in different countries, different upbringing. My upbringing was, uh, you know, in Serbia during de- several wars during 90s and difficult time and embargo in our country where we you know, had to wait in line for bread and, and milk and water and some, you know, basic things in life, you know, these kind of things that, are, you know, make you stronger and, and make you hungrier for success, I think, in whatever you choose to do. And, and that, that probably has been my foundation, you know, the, the very fact that I came from literally nothing and, and diffi- difficult life circumstances together with my family and with my people. And, uh, and, and going back to that and, and reminding myself where I came from, always um, inspires me you know motivates me to to push even harder Z. Australian Open champion Novak Nole Djokovic winning a record extending eighth Australian Open title and it also means that the Serbian is now on Grand Slam number 17 overall he's two behind Rafael Nadal on 19 and three behind the leader Roger Federer on 20 so it's getting ever tighter and tighter at the top and you take a look at this guy and his performances uh, especially uh, just using that Australian Open final as an example Chris, I mean, it's a testament to his mental strength Absolutely. that he got over the line. Definitely. Just when you think he's down, just when you think, okay, the other guy is getting the better of him. In this case, it was Dominic Tiem. He almost comes alive just when it looks like he's about to go down and he gets almost an explosion of energy. And that's obviously coming from a place where he refuses to lose, mm. just outright refuses to lose, especially in this match. Comeback King for Yeah, me. Comeback King. And and we heard the little interview, you know, he's talking about queuing up for milk and bread. And there's some cynics out there who will say, oh, sob story, you know. He's just uh, wanted to look really good. Mm. But that's where the foundation, that's where the seeds were Definitely. sown, you know, in that tough upbringing, in that tough childhood. That's where the seeds for that mental toughness were sown. Definitely. It almost sounds like a Zimbabwean child <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> you, I think, queuing up for bread. <laughs> queuing up for Does bread. That sound and familiar? familiar? <laughs> sounds very familiar. And that's, you're absolutely right. That's where the foundation comes from, where you learn 
even in the most dire of circumstances to be able to be hopeful and to be able to know that you can get out of it and you can get better and that's exactly what he's managed to do in the women's side Sophia Kanan says she's an icon she's on cloud nine and everything is just falling into place in her career after winning her maiden Grand Slam title at the Australian Open the 21 year old American defeated two time Grand Slam champion Gabina Muguruza 4-6 6-2 6-2 in Saturday's final Kanan who follows Naomi Osaka Ashley Barty and Bianca Andrescu as the latest female player to win a major is the youngest women's single champion in Melbourne since Maria Sharapova in 2008. All of this, honestly, these past two weeks have been a lot of emotions, a lot of, I mean, you guys could see after the match how much it all meant to me. Um, this is just such an honor. I'm so proud of myself, so proud of my dad, my team, everyone has been around me. Um, we worked all hard, we've been through tough times, but you know what, we did it, we fought, and yeah, I'm just, I'm like on cloud nine right now. <laughs> yeah, I knew I had to take my chance, I had to be brave. I'm playing two, two-time Grand Slam champion, and all respect to her, she played a really tough match, and every point was, it was such a battle, and a lot of moving, a lot of emotions on court from both sides, and yeah, I knew I needed to come up with the best shot, and five best shots of my life Z. so we take a look at that Alois you are pointing to the fact that this is the women's game and you know it's not surprising that we have someone new were you expecting Sophia Kennan mm, not really I didn't not really I, I, I didn't really see that one coming uh, to be honest uh uh, I thought that uh, that was going to be a breeze uh, for from Guruda, but uh, you know, like we we're saying, they, they've been they've been changing. Uh, the, the title has been changing hands for for the women's uh, in the women's game. They they keep on changing the parts, and we don't have a dominant figure mm-hmm. in, in the women's uh, uh, side of tennis at the moment. You know, so now right now, even if we go to the next Grand Slam, we, we don't know who is going to win it because they just uh, keep uh, chop keep, and keep change. Changing. Mike, for you, Gabina Muguruza coming into this, we would have just thought, you know what, she's just going to sew this one up and we move on and. She's the champion. Obvious winner. What crumbled for her? Yeah, listen, mental strength. We talked about Nole, uh, you know, uh, being an example, the epitome of mental strength on the men's side. Mm. Uh, Now she crumbled because she couldn't uh, keep it together. But we should have seen the warning signs because uh, uh, in the two weeks of the tournament, uh, she was uh, uh, she was able to beat, you know, three top ten players in her campaign. You know, she beat Alina Svitolina, uh, she beat Kiki Burton, she also beat Simona Halep. Now, very good tennis players. Now, if you come into a final on the back of that form, surely you have the confidence to hold your own in, in the final. That's exactly what uh, Kennan was able to do. She held her own even after she lost the first set. She carried on pushing. She carried on pushing and in the end it was Muguruza who can handle the pressure. Absolutely. So both players uh, found themselves locked into a relentless uh, baseline battle in the early stage of a surprise final under a closed roof on Rod Lava Arena following a cool rainy afternoon in Melbourne. Are we going to continue to see this round robin or as it were on the women's side where there's no outright champion it's every so often we have a new star who pops up but after that there doesn't seem to be much consistency in the women's game yeah absolutely uh, there, but there are two schools of thought there's the one school of thought that no one is really coming up uh, to dominate the other one could be that uh, they've now come about a generation of evenly matched really good tennis players mm-hmm. you know where you've got about uh, 10 who are able to challenge for a grand slam at any given time we are complaining because we love big stars you know we love a, a person we can serena. worship and, and we can say serena but uh, believe me for the wta this is great when they can have you know different winners and uh, it just uh, keeps a lot of people in different countries interested knowing that Definitely. you know what their local heroes could actually challenge for uh, a thing a grand slam unlike a situation where you know in the last decade uh, more often than not if serena was in the final she was going to win it mm-hmm. you know she was going to win it uh, the other person was really uh, just uh, playing to be um, just to be a bridesmaid <laughs> <laughs> Just to be a price. <laughs> but Alice, for you, I would argue that is it not important to have an almost that superstar figurehead for the next generation? Because in as much as we have multiple names at the moment, there's no one who is going to, in terms of history, stand up. There's no one who at the moment we're going to remember and say, this person at this particular era in tennis, is it not important to have that figurehead for the next generation? 
Yeah, um, uh, uh, Chris, uh, they ne sport needs our heroes. You know, uh, they, they need to inspire the generations. You know, when it's like this, you know, the ladies now, you tend to not to quickly forget about who was here. You know, it, 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 it gets washed away. You know, we've got Mike here. He said he started loving golf because of Tiger Woods. If, if there was no Tiger Woods, oh. if they were all the same, he was not going to be inspired. He would stay in basketball where he was. He would stay where he was. <laughs> but because there was a star that pulled him to pulled him to that, that's that's the issue. Even in boxing, Mike Tyson did the same. Mohamed Ali mm. did the same. You need as soon as the boxing uh, lost a top star, it almost went went dead. Died it's only down. now that he's coming back. Every boxing is coming up now. While we await the superstar, let us know who you think is going to be that shining star in the women's game. 0731168045. Hi, this is Benjamin Luck. I'm on the Zimbabwe Davis Cup team, and you're listening to ZFM Sport. Around the world in 60 seconds, international sports news. We take off in Miami where quarterback Patrick Mahomes produced a staggering fourth quarter performance to guide the Kansas City Chiefs to their first Super Bowl win in 50 years as they came from 10 points behind to stun the San Francisco 49ers 31-20. Mahomes had enjoyed a difficult evening under the pounding pressure of the 49ers and looked set to miss out on the big prize. But then when his side with his side 2010 down heading into the fourth quarter, the last year's MVP continued a season of comebacks as the Chiefs scored 20 unanswered points in 4 minutes and 57 seconds to take home the Vince Lombardi trophy. Across the Riyadh, Graham McDowell has set his sights on a big 2020 after returning to the winner's circle at the Saudi International. McDowell posted a level past 70 to claim a two-stroke victory under Dustin Johnson at Royal Greens Golf and Country Club, securing a first European tour title since the Open Open to France in 2014. The victory follows his win on the PGA Tour last year as the Corrales Pantacona Resort and Club Championship with his latest success lifting the Northern Irishman back inside the world's top 50. And here are your weekend rugby results starting with Super Rugby. The, Sh the Sharks won 25-15 against the Bulls. The Sun Wolves 36-27 against the Rebels. The Jaguares triumphed against the Lions 38-8. Crusaders 43-25 against the Waratahs. The Brumbies won 20 27-24 against the Reds. The Blues 37-29 against the Chiefs. Six Nations results. France won 24-17 against England. Ireland 19-12 against Scotland. And Wales unanswered 42 points against Italy. Play of the day. The biggest artists with their biggest hits on the biggest show. ZFM Sport. The Daily Sports Trivia Question is brought to you by Pearl Lenta Nutri-Active Instant Porridge. Kickstart your day. Introducing Palenta Nutri-Active Instant Porridge, a convenient, nutritious meal that gives you the perfect start to your day. Simply mix it with warm water, or uh, milk or water, and enjoy the goodness of healthy, tasty porridge. Now, every day on ZFM Sport, we've been presenting the Palenta Nutri-Active Instant Porridge Daily Sports Trivia, where you can win big. We have someone special on the line. His name is Anele. Hi, Anele. Hey, how are you? Unjani Bud. So I have two questions for you because that is the extent of my Ndivele. I have two questions for you. One's local, one in international. And if you get both of them correct, you're through to the draw where you could win something special from Palenta. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay, your first question. Which of these is a nickname for the league champions FC Platinum? Are they called A, the Platinum Warriors? B, Kugona Kunenge Kudena, or C, Pure Platinum Play? Pure Platinum Play. That C. is correct. Your second question. After winning the Australian Open, how many Grand Slams does Novak Djokovic now have? Is it A, 20? Is it B, 17? Or is it C, 19? Um... 17. <laughs> Good guess. Well done. <laughs> wow. So I didn't ask you earlier, Anele, what is your favorite EPL team? EPL? Yes. 
I go, uh, I stay with Alois Kunjira, the Red Devil. Yes. Yes. yes, sir. And Chris as well. <laughs> Me as well. Where are the Liverpool fans? We used to get a lot of Liverpool fans last I year. I think you finished them now. Liverpool <laughs> fans are of a certain generation. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Anele. Okay. Uh, shout out to everyone in the studio. The Daily Sports Trivia Question was brought to you by Perlenta Nutri-Active Instant Porridge. Kickstart your day. A decade of dominance. Lewis Hamilton, Callisto Pasua, and of course, Serena Williams. Irresistible, majestic, and the judgment of Hinti will surely be that she was in a class of her own. A decade of surprises. The Springboks in Japan, the Gems in Liverpool, and Ranieri's Leicester City. Wes Morgan, Claudia Ranieri. Lift the trophy to the skies. Leicester City are the champions of the Premier League. 5,000 to one shot. A decade of goodbyes. Hamilton Masakadza, Richie McCaw, Usain Bolt. Watch the clock, it's goal for Bolt. And again, he's done it again. They say lightning doesn't strike twice. A decade of comebacks. Barcelona versus PSG. Hard life, Shinigui. Tiger Woods. This is going to be the completion of one of the great comebacks in any sport all time. The return to glory. It was a decade of sheer thrills, spills, and excitement as the world came out to play. And in 2020, we go again. Bigger, better, and even more exciting on your favorite show, ZFM Sport. To all you Twitter heads, connect with ZFM Stereo on twitter.com forward slash ZFM Stereo. Forward slash ZFM Stereo. Fan Zone. Get in touch with the team and have your say your way. Operator. 0731168045. It's a two-way street on ZFM Sports, so we want to hear from you. Some responses coming through. Hansi Novak Djokovic, Ndeche Kwe Lukwa Mishi. We used to have to queue for bread together at somebody or bakery. That's from Gwenya Dumisani Kwa Mishi Mufakose. We're talking about mental strength, but also a lot of this is about the opportunity. Novak Djokovic is a poor kid growing up in Serbia, but still... He's able to become a world championship. We need to start creating those opportunities. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Uh, and and I think in tennis, it, it works pretty well because tennis is an individual sport. I think tennis, uh, like pretty much maybe like golf, but golf is expensive as a sport to play. Definitely. Uh, but uh, tennis, I think, you know, uh, it's, it's one coach where you can look to yourself, depend upon yourself. Mm-hmm. And as long as you're able to access a tennis court uh, and decent training facilities, it's down to how hard you work, Definitely. how hard you want it, you know. Some more responses. I think Utea had a very good team which seriously underperformed. With some of the good coaching, those boys could have at least reached the quarters. Underage teams need a good technical setup which gets the best out of our team. I think our technical team fell short. That's from Carlington. Alois, do you agree with that? That it was the technical team who fell short for the under-19s? I, 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 I don't know. I don't know. You know, there are, t- there are, there are times when you actually need uh, players to come through. You know, and, uh, and and do and do and do the business, and then the technical team. Most of the time, I wouldn't want to uh, give them the blame at the games. I want to see uh, if the tactical awareness was observed, if they did according to what was needed to do. Then, when it comes to mental strength, fighting for the for the points and all that. It comes, down to, it comes players. down to the individual players yeah. to do it. But the, the preparation, definitely, yes. Chris, uh, it's down to the coach. Is Prosper Otea one of the best uh, grassroots coach in the world? I don't think he is. No, I don't think uh, so. But he's what Zimbabwe cricket can afford. I think uh, a lot of things that you, you, when it comes to Zimbabwe sport uh, come down to who and what we can afford. Uh, and uh, sadly, uh, Prosper is who we go for. It's just like uh, the employment of our, uh, 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 by Zifa of our national team coach. <laughs> to go there. Uh, <laughs> you know, we've got Ligorisic uh, and he's, he's a coach. And listen, he's better, I think, maybe than some of the local options that were available. Mm. But he's no Michu. Look at Zambia. They've, yes. they've snared Michu. He, they're, they're, but they're paying him 25,000 US dollars a month. We can't afford to pay a coach 25,000 US dollars. Uh, you not. know, we can't afford uh, Eve Renard, who's earning uh, well over 100,000 
uh, US dollars a month in North Africa. Can we pay him that much? Because that, that's the top tier of African yeah. coaches. And so sometimes we then have to pick these guys who are uh, in the bottom drawer, <laughs> as it were. <laughs> they are looking to make a name for themselves. Yes. Yeah. But hopefully hopefully they will... de Jong. Yes, uh, hopefully yes. they will do that with <laughs> us so that they can make a name for themselves while they're making their names. We are also going up. Absolutely. <laughs> so more messages here. We need a schools league for our cricket boys so that they can play throughout the year. But our problem is Zimbabwe cricket. That's from King George II. I don't know. Yeah. The school curricula about sport is a problem. We've said it again and again. That they'll say cricket second like first term, mm. athletics uh, is, is that uh, soccer only second term, and it kills the sport development wise. It, it does kill. kids need to play as many sports as possible. My sorry, sorry to you. Yeah. I was uh, 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 this academy. Mm-hmm. They wanted to admit this kid at an academy. Mm-hmm. You know what they asked? They asked how many hours of football has this boy played? Yeah. Already, we, we don't even know how, how many here. So, But the kids overseas, they actually are supposed to be tabulating, getting that information. You train three hours a day, you have to record all those things because it will work in the future. Absolutely, and, and, and I can testify to that because uh, I, I taught uh, one of the top schools in the UK. Uh, yes. And, uh, you know, just talking to uh, their, sort of like, uh, their, their head of the sports program, I was impressed at the level that they are operating in. I mean, I did a full tour of the, of the primary school, of the junior school, uh, as well as the high school. You've got kids who are eight years old, Chris, who are already doing video and tactical analysis. Before, eight years old. They, before they go to play hockey, before they go to practice hockey. They're having a 45-minute session in wow. a theatre where they are now being taught, you know, because you've got to get it in between your, your ears first yep. uh, before you go and execute on the field of play. And then they are doing, like what Alois is saying, they're saying, okay, when you get to the age of eight, you pretty much know which sport you're good at. Yes. So if you're a cricket player, you're going to play cricket now. You can still play soccer, but you do it as a club. So it becomes a club, but it's not your main pursuit. You are, you are playing cricket throughout the year. You're playing rugby throughout the year. You're playing soccer throughout the year. And that's the level of refinement we need to get. Not this thing of we still get 18-year-olds uh, who are playing rugby, basketball, cricket, soccer. Yeah. Uh, it cannot work. Absolutely not. Mm. So keep sending your views through 0731168045. But you can also hit us up on Twitter. That's at ZFM Sport. The Castle Lager Premier Soccer League Report on ZFM Sport. The beating drum. The roaring fans. Take a ride on the wild side with the Africa Report on ZFM Sport. We start on the continent. Uh, former Warriors defender Lawrence Umslanger believes the gulf of experience between their team and their opponents in Group B made the big difference in their disappointing CAF Champions League football campaign. The FC Platinum uh, team finished the bottom of the group, uh, which had Tunisians uh, Etoile Dusahel, Al Hilal of Sudan, and eight time winners Al Akhli of Egypt. FC Platinum completed a disappointing campaign with a 2 0 defeat at Etoile at the Rades Olympic Stadium in Tunis. On Saturday night, just to take a look, taking a look at the final Group B standings at the bottom, of the power in fourth place, FC Platinum of Zimbabwe, one point. They played six, one nil, drew one, lost five, scored two goals, conceded eleven. Goal difference a minus nine. Al Hilal finished in third, but they had ten points, and of course uh, that is a decent return for a team finishing in third. Very competitive at the top because Al Akli in second was just one point better. On 11 and the team that finished uh, at the top at 12 had 12 points just two points more than the fit team that finished in third Alois once again we sit here talking about the disappointing campaign that FC Platinum has had on the continent and uh, it, this is the second time in the group stages the third time in a row because they've had three consecutive campaigns now on the continent and we are seeing listen very little in the way of improvement yeah, they actually have done worse than they did in the previous one. Mm. You know, when we thought that they were going to... They two points last yes. year. <laughs> yeah, they, at least the two points now. They, they, they Look at the goal difference. Mm. And look at the gulf in class. The between difference fourth between and everyone fourth else. and everybody else. You know, it can actually show that we are not, we are not, we are not improving at all. We said it in our, in our, in our previous show mm. as well. That look at Lawrence Mishang. What, what is he bemoaning? 
experience. Yeah. We talked about it. What are they doing? They are get, taking the experience away, yeah. bringing in new boys. They are going into the next campaign with a completely new inexperienced side again. And that uh, that's actually the, the, the characteristic they are ca- crying about. They, they, and they, they bring growing. in players that they don't give the experience. Like take for example, yes. Lamek Namo. Who yes. they bought uh, from uh, FC uh, from, tri- from, from Triangle. Triangle United, or even Raman Kutanzira, who they got from Highlanders. You bring in players like that, you play them one or two games, and then you bench them, and then uh, they're not getting any experience. Lamek Namo right now is still inexperienced in the CAF Champions League because the, last year, Chris, even though he was FC Platinum, he was hardly playing. He was hardly playing, but what you saw was when he did get a run out, he made a positive impact on the game, which then begs to question: Why is someone who can who is able to make that kind of positive impact on the the game on the bench are we buying for the sake of depleting the rest of the league are we buying simply to you know just we, for, the sake of for the sake of we said we've bought this I, is transfer season we've I, I bought is that what we're buying Alois made a good point when we discussed this last week when he said that FC Platinum are buying for the Castle Lager Premier Soccer League as a, a, opposed to buying players who are good enough to challenge on the continent exactly and what they're doing now in Shona we've got this uh, this uh, this idiom that goes mm. you know that statement he, 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 Chris he went to a private school you yeah to, you're going to need you, to explain this one Alois is like Let's say the, the, the hunter arrives with the 100 chickens. Instead of just biting and killing the, the two that they want to eat and eat mm-hmm. and feed up, they spend time killing everything else, mm. but they can only eat one. Ah, okay, you know? So that's what, that's what they do. They first kill them. They see a good player, they want to take the player. Mm. They see a good player there, they want to take a player. What do they have? They actually have good players. They, they actually release, some of, some of the times, they actually release better players than the ones that are bring. So, so what you are saying, in. Alois, is that FC Plan, instead of going to buy seven players, would be better served if they just bought three really, really yes. good players yes. and keep the ones that they've got mm. because they've already given them the experience. They need to still grow. The, what they need to do is to strengthen their side. Get a core side, the core of your side, then it gradually strengthen the side. Strengthen the side. Look at uh, Man City uh, for an example. Mm. He didn't just come in and dismantle the team, yeah. but it's a completely he new g- team two years he later. G- he gave them a chance. He said, yeah. "Okay, yes. I'm, first season, I'm going to watch these boys play." And then he was able to make the correct changes in the second season. And nice first. and easily. It was yeah. not even awesome. You know, so what FC Platinum is doing now, they've got a whole new team that, are, that is going to be getting into the next edition of the Champions League. What are we going to expect? We are not going to expect any improvement now. And they will still come back and say, ah, Tajiro Bones, Tajiro ex- experience. But they are doing it for themselves. Okay, if you want to know how really bad FC Platinum's campaign was, FC Platinum had the worst points return in the group stages of the CAF Champions League. FC Platinum had the worst goal difference of all the four groups in the CAF Champions League. FC Platinum scored the least number of goals with just two in all the groups in the CAF Champions League. FC Platinum had the second worst defensive record conceding 11. FC Platinum had the worst points differential from the team sitting at the top together with USM Alger and Zesco. And so that sums up FC Platinum's campaign in the CAF Champions League in a nutshell. All the rivalry. Here is Harry Kane for Tottenham. Oh, what a goal! A classic Derby goal from Harry Kane. Catch him in you can. All the stars. Oh, back here is Liverpool to in fact. Talk about impudence. Talk about improvisation. Talk about Sadio Mane. And all the game-changing moments. And Raheem Sterling rattles at home. All the updates from the Premier League on ZFM Sport. Jose Mourinho felt Raheem Sterling was lucky to avoid a clear red card in the opening stages of Tottenham's 2-0 home win over Manchester City. Second half strikes from debutante Steven Bergwin at Bergwin and uh, Son Heung-ming sealed a valuable victory for Mourinho's side with City, having seen Alexander Zinchenko dismissed for a second booking on the hour mark shortly before the opening goal. Let's hear from Jose Mourinho. 11 against 11, really difficult, hard, but my boys very well organized, great effort, great discipline. Uh, we know how we can score goals. We know how we cannot score goals. <laughs> um, so we were uh, waiting for uh, for our chances. And then um, 
with one player uh, more. I know that they are top quality. I know that one player less is not a big deal for them. The way they move the ball, they, the way they they they, 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 they give dynamic to their game. But in that moment, we had our chances to score, and uh, we didn't. Very important three points for us. Z. So some interesting decisions in that game. A lot of controversy. Alex, would you have changed any of those calls? Ah uh, no, I think I think yeah, controversy. Yes, our football goes with that, you know. But uh, it's it's part of the game. I enjoyed the game. It was a tight game, the rivalry, and it was tense. You know, we were bound to find those uh, those those kind of those kind of uh, situations. But I think for me, I walked away with whatever happened there. I think let it let it go. Let let, let the game let, let the game go because I didn't see any really uh, bad decision that could have that I could say this yeah. completely disadvantaged the other team. Okay, so taking a look at the two uh, managers, obviously Jose Mourinho is happy, a little bit less pressure. He's managed to grab a win. But for Pep Guardiola, do you think he's kind of choked off this season and said, you know what, Liverpool have this uh, absolutely. and he's working absolutely. for the next absolutely. season yeah. now? I, I think, uh, listen, they, they are, I think, duty-bound to come out and say we're still fighting we're still doing this uh, because that's what the fans expect to hear mm-hmm. and uh, and and listen people will, will, will uh, frown upon them saying we've given up the title this early uh, so they'll come out and say all the right things but I think you you can tell from uh, Jose Mourinho's approach uh, you know they had uh, Emmerich Laporte he was uh, apparently he's got a bit of a niggle he could have played in this game he chose not to play him why because he's got his eyes on Real Madrid uh, for Pep Guardiola now it's all about the CAF Champions League uh, not the CAF Champions League UEFA Champions <laughs> Uh, he would walk the CAF Champions League. <laughs> it's all about the UEFA Champions League. I think we're going to see a very different city in the Champions League than the one we are seeing in the league because uh, he's real- he realizes that's the only trophy now he can get to appease uh, his employers and his fans. So speaking of Pep Guardiola, he said that it would be an incredible mistake to criticize his Manchester City players after they played really well despite the defeat. No, we lost again. So we... We play good, but we lost the game. So happen again, and something, something I have to score. No, it's happened. So we have to accept it and and work on that. So analyze that. So sometimes it's not easy. It's not easy. Not even for me. I know the players, uh, but we did uh, really well, honestly. And do us and run and and play good and the chance to create. Z. So Alois, Pep Guardiola, they're absolutely correct. His team did play well. It just didn't come together for City. But you've got to say something about that defensive line. Something is not quite working there and Pep needs to fix it fast. Yeah, I think he's right. They played well. They created chances, uh, took shots at goal, a lot of them as well. You know, as long as the team is allowed to take so many shots, it means that they're on top of the game, they're on top of the situation. But yeah, as you say, the defense, we have spoken about it. I'm sure Pep knows. He knows he made a blunder with this team. We are, we are not uh, the, the, the coaches there at that level with Pep, but we saw this one coming. Mm-hmm. We saw the right at the beginning of the season that he this is a bad decision. Another yes. centre back we, with, we with Vincent yeah. Company leaving. Uh, he couldn't he didn't replace. He, yeah, he didn't replace him, and then uh, he stayed with Laporte, Stones, and Otamendi. And then the one thing that he couldn't afford happened: Laporte got injured. Got injured. Mm. And so for me, that was terrible. Uh, let's give you a quick update uh, on the other match that was played yesterday. They Arsenal uh, and of course uh, Burnley were in action and uh, both the managers not happy uh, after their goalless draw. Uh, Alois, you take a look at uh, Mikel Ateta. Yes, we've noted the improvements in terms of style of play and organisations, but the results are not coming. Yeah, the results are not coming and he needs goals. You know, what is really not coming is the goals and uh, the and they're not creating enough as well. They're trying to move the ball around. Yes, mm-hmm. they're playing. They're moving the ball around as well. But, the but they're strikers, not creating enough they're, chances. They're not creating enough chances and the strikers are not also coming to the party. A notable results. Mohamed Salah scored twice as Liverpool beat Southampton 4-0 to go 22 points clear of the Premier League at Sable. Leicester kept their eight-point lead over fourth place Chelsea intact following a topsy-turvy 2 or draw at the King Power Stadium. And United are now three matches without a win in the Premier League as they drew uh, 0-0 with Wolves at Old Traffords. Quick update from Syria. Fiorentina owner Rocco Comiso said he was disgusted by referee uh, Fabrizio Pasca after Juventus were awarded two penalties in a 3 0 win yesterday. Juventus somehow seems to get some good calls and get an edge. Is this really part of what. Good, a really good calls. <laughs> yeah. Really good calls. Is this part of what gives them the edge? 
yeah sometimes you know you see big teams sometimes they usually get uh, these big calls and all that but uh, at the same time people always cry when these decisions are made and i have always often heard people saying soft penalty but there's nothing like soft penalty if it was a penalty penalty is a penalty, is a penalty. Uh, uh, penalty. yes yesterday is true the uh, were, is a were, were dodgy <laughs> at best yeah, they, they, were, they were dodgy yeah. and uh, i think i think uh, it, it was more to do with the juve you were being the, the, yeah, the club in their and, home state in the yeah, home stadium hometown decision and all that you know it's like dynamo say so play at rivaro stadium even if it's your thigh the whole stadium will go yeah. penalty and if and it's a weak referee, referee, referee and over a week you give the you give, give the penalty yeah unfortunately that's the situation yeah but uh, to be honest uh, listen i don't know hey because ish <laughs> it's a bit much. Yeah, it's a, it's a bit much, and uh, and I guess that, that that's what Inter Milan is going to have to overcome as well. They need they, to overcome. They, that. Yeah, they need to overcome that and not focus on that and make sure that they win. And of course, uh, Inter uh, they won two 0 at Udinese to remain three points behind Juventus. Would love to give you news out of Spain and Germany, but unfortunately, time has run out. We'll give you that news on tomorrow's edition of ZFM Sport Five Past Six. And it's Messi! It is the cleanest of clean finishes from the best on the planet. The biggest sports stories. Liverpool, the champions of Europe, are top of the world. The biggest interviews. That uh, such a great spectacle is ruined by such, such thuggish behaviour. And all the analysis right here. He's the one player that has the arrogance to think that he can play in any stadium in the world and any pitch in the world in front of any player in the world and take them on. Every weekday, it's my sport, it's your sport. It's CFM Sport on CFM Stereo. My station, your station.